by Gottsky in theories of development also relied on stages, but these are more socially bound developments rather than sequential or development changes in a child's physiology or physical development. For infants to preschool age children, Vygotsky wrote of neoformations of ideas and concepts that came about due to social situations. Vygotsky saw childhood through a lens of stable periods punctuated by periods of crisis that he referred to as critical periods. Preschool to age three students, well, that was that was one of these periods. Vygotsky even highlighted the, the importance of universal preschool. He wrote, Facts show in other conditions of rearing the crisis occurs differently in children who go from nursery school to kindergarten. The crisis occurs differently than it does in children who go into kindergarten from the family. However, this crisis occurs in all normally preceding child development. So all children went through some form of crisis around neoformation of oral language development, but even then he recognized the importance of universal pre-K school. Language for Vygotsky was an internalization of social interactions as central neoformations during critical periods like age three. Children picked up most of their language through proximity. They still do. Most of our words were not taught explicitly. Children do not really need to be taught, but internalize social situations, according to Vygotsky, as concepts. And these concepts get re restructured during critical periods of development, like preschool. Some things children can't be taught, even with assistance at, at different stages of development. This gap, like what, between what a child can just pick up, or that they can learn tomorrow through play, and what they can never really be taught, even with all of the help in the world. Well, that is what Vygotsky meant by the zone of proximal development, or ZBD. The, the ZPD is much more than the I do, we do, you do, that kind of gets simplified in our American schools. When you're teaching in a zone of proximal development, you're trying to be more intentional towards neoformations, and you have to create leading activities that take advantage of social situations of the students. You have to think about all of the cultural mediating factors that are in that zone. And it's not just a set of zones of like learning skills. It's not discrete skills. A zone is everything within that proximity that will help that student in those neoformations of concepts. So really, while Overall, the different theoretical perspectives and approaches that may impact the measures and interventions of oral language development, all researchers really kind of agree that background knowledge, which often gets lumped into oral language development in the early childhood classrooms, those are massive predictors of later reading performance. So is oral language development when we include not just the semantics and vocabulary, but also that phonemic awareness and that alphabetic principles and other elements of oral language development that go on to predict reading comprehension. Vygotsky and theories of oral language development overall just really, they still influence much of the research in oral language development around executive functioning skills. Um, because while both Piaget and Vygotsky held some type of crisis or conflict as key development, Vygotsky saw this concept of private speech as conversations with oneself that really was very important to the social development of preschoolers. Piaget really saw this more as a sign of immaturity, something that kids had to age out of, this internal dialogue that they had and that was very observable amongst preschool students. So that, that is in that kind of private speech, that is where we're seeing a lot of the focus on executive functioning research in early childhood classrooms today. And that draws heavily on Vygotsky and perspectives. Um, so when it comes to oral